Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to do hit pop-up text. So we're going to be able to hit an enemy. Text is going to be floating up in the air. And then we're also going to make it differentiate whether it's a crit or whether it's a normal hit and display the text color or text size or however you want to do it appropriately. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the scene and basically we have our player going to hit this chicken here. And so we can see that we have just a normal player I zoom in just for the sake of the video, but we just have an attack. And we can see that in the basic settings here, I do have the min and max set to one just for easy testing. And then I do have a critical attack percentage, which will boost it up to 200%. And the crit rate is 10%. All right, so this is really all that's important about the player. I have the chicken here. It really has no logic in it. The hit logic is that it has a little bit of invincibility. It's got 100 HP, and then just for testing. And then the only real thing that I have is this hit receive damage where it does a blink of red. So it does an instant blink of red. It lasts for 0.2 seconds, and then it disappears. It also has a connected object, which we will get into right now. So what we're going to do to control the hits is we're going to use a child object to be like the hit detector, basically. And so we're going to use this one called hit text control. And I underscore it in the front. That means that this is going to be generally a child object, or I should say more specifically, a connected object within th uh, this tab list. And so let's go see what this is actually doing. All right, so here is the setup action for it. What we're gonna do in here is make this object's max HP equal to the parent's object max HP. And sometimes this can get confusing, but how you select the parent object's max HP is you select this option, parent object. And then it's kind of confusing right here because you're like, well, which one do I select? How do I know which one's going to be the parent? Because this object can technically be used for any enemy. Well, all you have to do is you can even use its own right here and just select max HP. And what's going to happen is that when this change runtime action is ran, it's going to grab the parent object. It's not actually going to grab the one that you select from this list. You could select any object from this list. You're just trying to grab that variable. And if it's a custom name or a, sorry, a custom variable or switch, it's going to make sure that the parent has it. And if it doesn't have it, then nothing's going to happen. So there's a fail safe. You, you don't have to have the variable. In this case, every object has a max HP. So you can go through any object. And I, I hope that makes sense. The same with lock object, it's the same thing. You can just pick from, from any object there. All right, so once we grab the max HP, we can then grab the HP, because you can't change HP unless the max HP allows it. So now we're going to change this object's HP to the parent object's HP. And so now we have an updated child object. This connected object will now equal any enemy's HP. And so all you have to do is on any enemy, you just add an object connection and you add this to its list. You can set it with a switch if you want it to be invincible or not. And then you would have to set it to the proper display position that you want, especially for the text to pop up. And this would be a good idea to have a connection point here for, for this one. And then you want to make it into a child and the, and when you make it into a child, that's how you can grab the parent objects uh, variable. All right, so once the setup's done here, we can unconditionally go to this wait for hit action. And this wait for hit action is waiting for two things. Is it a normal hit or is it a crit hit? And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into the link here. And the first variable check that we're going to check for is if the parent's crit received switch is off. All right, so every object has a crit received switch. Let's go to switches and it is right here. And what this is going to do is whenever you receive a critical hit, it's going to turn on and it's only going to turn on for a frame or two. It's a very quick switch and then it automatically turns off. And so that's what's going to happen. So we're for a normal hit, we're checking to make sure that it is off. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that this HP does not equal the parents HP. And so if they do not equal each other, then that means that it got hit. So if it got hit and critical received is off, 
well, then that is a normal hit, and it will go to normal hit. And in this case, what's going to happen, let me pull this out here, is we're going to have the HP, we're going to re-equalize it to the parent's HP. So now we have the new value that it's going to be. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this object's received damage amount and we're going to equal it to the variable uh, to the parent object's received damage amount. So now let's go to the variables tab here and every object comes with a received, see that's received damage rate, received damage amount. And what this variable is doing is whenever you're hit, the incoming damage gets saved to this variable and it will retain there until the next hit. So you can always know what the last hit was basically or the amount of it. And so in the action, that's why we're making this object's equal to the parents now because the parent got hit, but we're going to take the value. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to generate the hit text. All right. Now the hit text is a specific object. And in this case, you can always use, you can pretty much guarantee that you can generate this at the center of this object because it's the object connection that you want on the connection point this one should be centered where it needs to be. So you could probably mostly use center for this. We also want to generate it as a child because it's going to use the values that this parent now has, all right? And so we're going to generate that hit text. All right, so let's take a look at this object. I named it gen in front just so I know that it's a generated object. It's just a flag that just sticks out to me for naming convention. And so the first thing that it does is it moves, all right? So it moves 36 pixels upward. It moves at 100% of its speed. It's moving itself, and then it's going to stop. So it's not going to move forward in the logic until this move is done, which is really nice. Because with this selected, you can then use a change unconditionally, and it will not trigger that until the movement's done. All right, now one thing to point out about the movement is I'm using accelerated movement. And so I don't use the normal horizontal vertical parameter here. I use the accelerated move parameters. So first off, I set my max horizontal vertical to five, and then you set your acceleration. This is the amount that it increments in. So every 0.1 second, it's going to increment a little bit more until you get to the max of five. And then the deceleration is the same way, except for I'm not using it in for this text purposes. You can see that when I do hit the chicken, it kind of slowly goes up. And I like that effect. All right, so moving on, the first thing that we do is we grab the, we make this object's received damage amount equal to the parent object's received damage amount. And remember, the parent is now the hit text control. So you're going from the enemy, transferring it to the hit text control, which is transferring it to the generated hit text. One other important thing to note is that th this does not follow the parent object. Now this could be very uh, personalized to your project. Do you want the numbers to stick while the enemy's moving maybe on a knockback? Or do you want the numbers to show, to go upward or pop up basically where, uh, where it was and not move? If you don't want it to move, click don't follow parent object. If you do want it to move, click stick to parent object. Or if you want it to slowly move, you can track it within a certain uh, amount of time or something like that. Okay, so going back to the actions. So we move it upwards. We grab the amount that we need to display because this is the amount that we got hit by, right? And so now we need to show the text. And the only one that's really important is this one down here. And I'll show you what all these other ones are here. That's more a little trick. So the important thing is, is that we use the variable here. So this is a show text runtime. We're showing it in a variable. We're using the object self received damage amount. Now, the other thing that we could do is we could actually do the parent or no. So this is, yeah, okay. So this is why we had to grab it because there's no parent object here. All right. So since there was no parent object, we had, <clears throat> we had to use the self object received damage. And because of that, we had to grab it from the parent. 
right? So then you can select the font of your choice. For a normal hit, I chose a smaller font. You can set the amount of digits. You can add zeros if you want, hide the decimals. This is a typical setup, although I, there's a lot of cases where I do add the zeros as well for scores and times and stuff like that, all right? So we're going to lay it out. We're gonna say no time limit. You're going to have to just kind of play around with these settings, um, give it a, a good text display area, no background. And then I usually, for a case like this, I think center center is a really good way to determine where it's gonna show. But you might, like for instance, you could use top in this case, and let's just see what it would look like. Well, actually, no, I'd have to change all of them. But so yeah, you'd have to play around with what works for you basically. And then the other important thing is to hide on the action change. That means that once it moves to destroy, this show text will be gone. And then we're going to position it in the frontmost layer. So it's not going to be in the above the HUD, but it's going to be above everything in the scene. All right. And so that that's what it's displaying. It's displaying that receive damage amount. Now, what are these other ones here? These are if you want a black border. And let me show you what I mean. So right now, this is what it looks like. You can hit and you can see a black border around the word. So if you're using a font that doesn't naturally have a border, this is what it looks like. I'm going to skip the, the black borders here and we'll see what it looks like. So you can see that it's just really faded out. You can't really see it that well. Now, one common trick that I've used before is sometimes just showing the a little black underline underneath it and maybe to the right is enough sometimes. So for instance, this one is one underneath it and then this one is that would be to the left, so this one would be to the right. So I'll just move this up here so we can make this easier. So sometimes if you just have at least two, it looks a little better. You can see that there's now a black border just down and up. But if you wanted the full thing, then you would just have to adjust accordingly and you can get a full. Now let me show you what I'm doing here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm calling the exact same uh, show text. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I just copy pasted it. The only difference that I did was I changed the color to black. And then I just adjusted the position. And I did it in each direction. So I would do one pixel down. That's why this is a positive one. Then I would do one pixel to the left or this would be to the right, which is an x of one. Then I would do a black one that is one pixel up, so negative one. And then here's a one pixel left, again, black. And the important thing is, is that these are called, the black borders are called before the actual text, okay? Because this, the last one is going to be on top. So now with all of those there, we can see that we get a nice uh, black border around our text. And it's a very simple way of doing it. You just literally make your first one, copy paste it for it or copy paste it once and set the, the black text and the appropriate adjustment. And then you copy paste that one another three more times and boom, you've got a black border. All right. So then after this is done, it quite simply just goes to destroy and it just destroys. Now, when you're destroying stuff, you want to make sure that none is selected on the restore conditions. Else you can have problems when you come back into the scene because default is on a scene change. So if it's destroyed and you come back in the scene, all these tech pop-ups are going to pop back up and destroy. So you do want to make sure that it's set to none. Okay, so now that we've gone over the generate hit text, let's now go and see what happens to get the crit text. Because we can see in the player here, if I set, let's go set the uh, crit rate to 50. Now, one thing I want to point out, say that your player is setting, you, you've set the crit rate to 50, but your enemy is not taking crits and you're wondering why, why is this percentage not working? Go to your enemy. If it has a received damage, check and make sure this is not selected because this is actually going to determine what the incoming crit rate is. All right. So this is normally selected at 5% by default. So if you unselect that, it will work. Okay. <laughs> so that's a very important tip right there. Okay, so now that we have the crit rate up a little bit, let's uh, start hitting our enemy and, and see exactly. So you can see that there's some crits right there. 
and it's about 50%. So that that's working good. So let's see how we got it to differentiate between the crit. Or we already know that. Let's let's just see the difference there. Okay, so in the crit, if it is a crit, we've talked about this variable here, if it or this uh, switch, if it is a crit, it'll be on. And remember, it's very quick. So I did make it a top priority. I'm not sure if that's needed, but I, I did do that. And then we're also checking the same thing. If the HP is not equal to the parent HP, that means we got hit. Then we're going to here and we're doing the exact same thing. HP of the variable, we are uh, taking the received damage amount and then we're generating the crit text this time instead, again, as a child. So the crit te or the uh, crit text is, is right here and it basically does the exact same thing. It shows the amount, or first off, it grabs the amount from the parent object. It moves up just the same. And in, but this time, instead of showing it with white text and with a smaller font, we're just calling show text with a different font and a different color. That's really it. And you can do it, everything else is exactly the same. And you can do anything that you wanted here. You could add another image. You could have an, an animation in this one. So you could really differentiate it from the hit received. And so we get uh, questions like this. Uh, quite a bit. So I wanted to, to show that you can do a hit and a, and a crit and get that effect. So anyway, I hope that this uh, made sense. I'll show you one more example here with with a little variation in the attack here. So we'll do um, min attack of two and a max attack of three, and then we'll say a crit rate of 50. And we'll just watch this chicken just drown out and die. So you can see all the crits and the hits. It reminds me of, uh, what was that online game, Ragnarok or something, where all these numbers just flying up constantly. So uh, one more thing I will point out before, I, before we end here is do make sure, this is top view, so I didn't have to worry about gravity. Do make sure that if you are using gravity or if you're in a side view project to change the gravity. The easiest way is to go to move jumping, set it to zero. You'll never have to worry about it for items that you don't care ever about it. So just go to all these objects and hit it at zero. And the one more thing I'd like to point out is that if you do have an enemy that say has a hit action, well, yeah, if you do have an enemy that does have a hit action, whether it's a common action or anything, it is perfectly fine to actually just generate the object from within here. Okay, so you could just go to here and say, take this uh, generate hit text and put it into here. And as long as you are generating it as a child, it's still going to grab those values and it will still work. So if you have a, a hit action in your enemy, then by all means, this is a very simpler way to do it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, Steam Forms, Discord, comments below. We'll get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.